Mr. Chairman, I'd like to ask unanimous consent that a letter dated February 4, 2015 from the Asian American Hotel Owners Association be admitted for the record. It will be. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have deep respect for, for the senator from Massachusetts, but I want to take issue with the premise of her last question, which was, for years, American business has found ways to avoid responsibility, i.e. franchising was one of the things that she mentioned. I think, and I'm not a franchisee and never was one. I ran a business with Sub S Corporation business, but we had, we had independent contractors. But I think America, franchising started out as an opportunity for a business to expand and grow a brand and a product and a service and an opportunity for the middle class to own a piece of it that they never could own if they had to do it as a big business. In fact, there are a lot of people today in Congress talking about the middle class. Now we've got to look out for the middle class. If you take away the ability or the incentives for corporations to franchise or in other ways to offer their opportunity to middle America, you're going to make the big guys bigger and the small guys are going to be out of business. Mr. Moore, I would assume that would be true. Do you think so? I would, yes. Now you start your business as sub S or a C Corp? I'm sorry? You're a sub S or a C Corp? Uh, we're sub S. Most businesses and franchises are sub S, is that not correct? I think so. If you took the thinking behind this rule potential and applied it to the IRS, why wouldn't the IRS say, well, since McDonald's is a C Corp and they pay withholding and they pay Social Security taxes on a quarterly basis, and unlike what you do as an independent contractor, everybody who's got a franchise is a franchisee of McDonald's now has to do the same thing McDonald's does in terms of tax filings and withholding. Wouldn't that be an actual extrapolation of the same rule, just a different application? I could see that happening, yes. And if you did that, it would make franchising almost impossible because it would take away the benefits of a small entrepreneur from being able to start a small business and grow it using a brand name that was established by a major corporation. Am I correct? Yes. Mr. Babson, the definition of employer and employee under Taft-Hartley was passed by the Congress of the United States, correct? Yes, sir. It was not written by an unelected employee of the National Labor Relations Board. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And I think that's the important thing. If this is a legitimate debate for Ms. Warren and I to have and the other members of the Senate, it ought to be on the floor of the United States Senate in a piece of legislation. It ought not be defending ourselves against the ruling by an, an attorney working in the Department of the Federal Government. And I think that's my main point on this issue. I, I don't argue with there may be points we ought to look at, but I don't think it should be dictated by the NLR NLRB attorneys. I think we should decide as a Congress of the United States, just like we did in Taft-Hartley, what the definitions are. 